let's come back to the um, to the improvements that we can do in the output stage if you remember i explained earlier uh, this uh, op amp and uh, let's take one by one all the uh, all the points where uh, we can do a slight improvement at least um, let's start with the output stage since it was the last uh, presented probably it's fresher in uh, our minds and the output stage as i said is something like this so um, i explained previously how it's working but let's look a little bit carefully what is the problem with this structure i mean where can where we can have problems and um, actually we can have problems at very low voltage on the output or very high of course but let's take the case of the lower side i mean the nmos uh, side this one this one plus this structure and let's see what is happening if the output voltage goes very very low let's make the drawing one more time because it will be easier to explain on a fresh schematic so we have here let's make them also bigger um, one like that. Pum, pum. Pum, 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 pum. And here we have a current source. These are PMOSs. And this point goes directly to here. And then we have a current source, which actually is part of the intermediate stage can be even directly the intermediate stage, the, this part. But let's say that in our case it's just current source, doesn't really matter from where it is. And on the top side we have another current source that, as you know, is coming from the NMOS and the PMOS. So this is our structure. Of course we have the PMOS here, but let's ignore this for the moment. Now, what is the problem? The problem, as I said previously, oh, sorry, I have to connect this one here and this is the out, together with this one, the same wire. Now, um, the signal, active signal is here, for example. As I said, um, the problem that I see here first is the fact that this one can go full rail to rail, while this one, even if it is going rail to rail, still at a certain moment, this one will go so low that this MOS, uh, oh, let's put the labels from the last one, M5, M6, M3, M4, M1, Mn, Mp. So, if output voltage goes very, very low, below the VGS, below two VGS is actually, because you have one VGS here and one VGS here, you will simply not have, I mean, um, this one cannot go so low, even if, as you can imagine, since this one is low and is a PMOS, the M5 will be fully on. Still, this current source will be limiting the voltage. So, this voltage cannot go lower. And at a certain moment, when this one goes very low, um, simply the the, um, the quiescent current will not be the expected one. Simply because uh, gate of gate and drain of M3 will stay at the same value based on this current, while we want to have in the output, let's say, uh, I don't know, 100 millivolts. We'll have 100 millivolts here. Here, this one will want to force 100 millivolts, but will not be possible because M5 is fully on. The entire current will flow through the M5, will be nothing through the M6. And since the entire current is here, VGS of M4 is quite big, is high. M4 is almost fully on, but there is no 
current through this path. So this net, which we said, yeah, this net should follow the out. This is out clone. Let's put here with the, like, like that, the apostrophe. This clone of the output voltage will not be the same, will not be correct. Simply because this structure is not working anymore. And um, to, to see this, is easier to simulate only uh, the lower part of the output uh, stage. I mean, only this part. And to do something like this, it's easy because you can connect here a voltage source, plus and minus. You can sweep this. You can exclude the uh, the um, the MP transistor, the big PMOS can cut this line, put here a voltage source, measure the current that flows into this input, in both directions of course, and you have to sweep from 0 to VDD. And at that moment you will see something like this. You will see somewhere in the middle the current will stay flat or almost, maybe a little bit rising is the current that you expect, because this is your spec, let's say here you want to have quiescent current on the end. Here on the x-axis you have from 0 to VDD. And what will happen? At a certain moment, at around 2 VGSs, the, um, the voltage, sorry, the current, quiescent current, will simply go down, something like this, and then when you are really, really close to zero, will collapse. We'll, we'll have to go through the origin at a certain moment. So it will be something like this, at very narrow uh, angle. But the problem is that this variation is starting here. Usually here is around 300, 400, 500, 0.4 volt, let's say. Now, um, if you have a big supply, like uh, 5 volt or uh, 10 volt or uh, whatever, 0.4 volt is not a problem. It's enough room, so you you can be fine with this. But if your voltage is very low, like for example 1 volt, 0.4 volt is too big. Because as you can imagine, this is on the N side, but the same thing will happen on the P side. So, uh, okay, let's put this on top expected drawing for the quiescent current if you have exactly the same structure but flipped and then uh, if you do the same simulation but for the p side you'll have the same thing you'll have a current that is almost constant and suddenly dropping and then here is the vdd and if you eat 0.4 volt from here and 0.4 volt from this side is too much is 0.6 volt taken sorry 0.8 volt taken from the supply if the supply is one volt as you can imagine this region from here till here is just 0.2 volt which is too small yeah it's not practical but there is an improvement that you can do and this improvement is something that i uh, discovered myself i don't know if it was presented ever in a book or something in an article um, and the problem here is that this structure is providing two VGSs in the drain of M5. Now, the easiest way to, to avoid this is just to avoid having two VGSs in the drain of M5. So that the M5 can go even lower and M6 also can follow the M5 so that this voltage, the expected out voltage is really copy of the output voltage which is, which is this one. And I will make the drawing here just to, to be easy to compare. Um, so we have exactly the same structure initially. Um, PMOS, M5 and M6.
and current source of course on the other side the um, I have exactly the same thing here's the current source um, oh sorry here is the current source and here is the output stage let's see here here we are doing the test mn mn m1 as i said i want don't want to connect this one here anymore so what i can do the easiest option is to take the transistor and connect it somewhere else of course since we want to have the same vgs's on m3 and m1 i have to connect the gate to the drain it's easiest way actually this is m4 m3 but now i want to have this one going lower with m5 the easiest way is to connect it here directly and from this net i have again one vgs up and now I need to pro provide a certain current to this net because I cannot just leave it like that. So I can provide another current source. So with this what we obtain? We obtain exactly the same voltage, like here, but M5 has the liberty to go even down in voltage if the out wants to go down. So now we connect this one to the gate of M1 and we have exactly the same functionality, exactly with the same voltages. So if you have this structure with the same size like this one, the same voltage will be here and here. Now, of course, since we have an extra current source, for example, here is 2i, here is i, it was i, but now since we have another one, which can be i, one current, we have one current from here and half of this one, so we have again two times the current here. So as you see, there is more current consumption because you have an extra current here and an extra current here. This transistor is the same, this one is the same, M6 is the same, M5 is the same, and everything else is the same. But just by adding two extra currents and connecting the um, M3 differently, you can avoid this problem and how it will look like if you do exactly the same simulation like before and you vary here voltage and you look at the current that you have into the um, into the um, MN transistor you will see what I uh, will just put uh, on the same uh, drawing just to be clear let's use different color you will have something like this this line will be the same like before but at very low voltages this one will continue to stay flat and it will drop only at very low for example usually i notice you can go with 0.1 volt or even lower so just by modifying a little bit the schematic just by thinking a little bit what is the problem with this structure you can usually easily, easily um, find the solution that is improving your uh, linearity of the quiescent current of course the same, th the same thing can be done on the p side if you flip everything so now your range in the case that i explained before if the supply is one volt as you can imagine instead of 0.2 volt here for uh, the linearity in the middle you will have something like 0.8 because you have 0.1 here and 0.1 here let's use still blue color something like this so this is one of the possible improvements that you can do easily with any any effort and you don't need too much uh, it's quite easy to understand also the, the, the problem and also the, um, the improvement that can be done. Another improvement that you can do is actually to um, 
to solve well an, uh, the same structure has a slight problem if the voltage is too high because if the voltage is too high again the um, gate of m5 will go to supply as you can imagine you don't have enough room to the um, top uh, current uh, source because here you need a vgs and here you need the vdsat if you are not having enough room then this current will be off if the current is off as you can imagine this voltage is go going down there is no more vgs everything collapses to solve this the solution is quite easy you can do it for the structure but also you can do it on this structure it's exactly the same it's an add-on and okay we'll make here uh, with the blue color you can easily place another transistor in series with m5 sorry in series in parallel with m5 so that m5 is not uh, killing the current source so you can do exactly the same thing and connect it exactly in parallel with m5 of course here you can you have to provide a certain biasing voltage v bias you decide what is the voltage the best voltage for you usually one vgs two vgs versus supply but with this you avoid having um, this uh, voltage sorry this current source going into linear so everything will stay uh, perfectly functional this is a small improvement uh, you can do it if you really have uh, problems usually i was not doing this before 